So yeah, uh, thank you. My name is Nick Trian DeFillo, and I work for Brimley Engineering Corporation in Chicago, Illinois. And I'm going to present today on a case study for fiber reinforced concrete fireproofing in uh, aggressive environments. And um, this is going to be framed uh, for, around a case study that I had the opportunity to work on early in my career uh, for a fireproofing repair project. Uh, so this is uh, one of the, the goals of this um, session is to link the, uh, the lab uh, testing with, with practical. So this is going to be more on the practical side. Uh, the design life for this repair was uh, 25 years, and uh, we're about halfway through that now. So I had the opportunity to go back and reinspect this uh, the performance of the repair after 12 years in service. So going through the, uh, the outline for the, uh, the talk here, to cover some of the fireproofing goals. Uh, we'll talk about the case study overview, some of the um, engineering decisions and what the main objectives for the repair were. And then uh, we'll talk about the um, inspections that have been performed and basically how it's performing to date uh, in service. All right, so uh, goals of, of fireproofing. So this is a, um, it's passive fire protection for the structural steel. So we're not talking about uh, uh, concrete that's holding any weight. It's, it's non-structural. It's only there to protect the steel in the event of a um, hydrocarbon pool fire. And these fires are, are extremely aggressive. They can be in excess of 2000 degrees Fahrenheit. And it, it gets to that temperature at, uh, uh, very quickly, just a matter of minutes. So uh, definition for passive fireproofing is to protect structural steel from intense and prolonged heat which can lead to um, reduction in strength of the steel and not only strength, stiffness as well, uh, which could cause collapse of the structure. So this particular case study is a 135 foot high by 23 foot by 23 foot in planned structure. It is uh, supporting a reactor at an oil refinery in the Midwest, United States. It's an open brace frame structure um, it was built in 1968 and um, at the time of repair was about 39 years old. So uh, this project took place in 2007. And at that time, the fireproofing was in very poor condition. So these are the columns. Uh, they're fairly large columns, W14 by 193 columns. And uh, it's important to note that the aspect ratio of the structure was fairly high. So the um, four, four to one uh, aspect vertical to um, horizontal. So um, at the time of the uh, repair, concrete was in poor condition. There was a lot of spalling and delamination and we needed to go through and um, uh, prioritize the repair work and come up with a, a durable uh, repair for the concrete. So the first part of this was to conduct a um, detailed condition assessment uh, to map out where uh, structural steel was exposed, with whether, where there was welded wire reinforcing exposed from the fireproofing, and to really try to define why the, the spalling was occurring. Um, in this case, there was a cooling tower that was located uh, downwind from the structure, and that was contributing to some acid overspray uh, impacting the, um, the concrete surfaces. And that also there was an explosion that had occurred in the past that uh, had caused some of the cracking as well. So we wanted to make sure we were addressing uh, these items in order to maximize the durability of the fireproofing repair. All right, so the design objectives for the repair, the owner specified a 25 year design life. Uh, we wanted to minimize the risk of falling concrete debris. So when we're talking about normal weight fireproofing, um, 135 feet up in the air, there's a lot of potential energy stored there. So if it's not adequately anchored back to the, the steel, uh, that, that could result in spalling. It's a, it's a safety hazard. It could uh, impact fire potential equipment at grade. So we wanted to make sure we did everything we could uh, to maximize durability for the repair. Um, I mentioned that the, the um, a three hour fire rating was, was specified. Uh, which means that the uh, the temperature in the steel, if when exposed to a fire, had to be limited to a thousand degrees 
Fahrenheit for three hours. So the thickness of the, of the fireproofing material had to allow that three hours for emergency response uh, to, to mobilize and to put the fire out. And as I mentioned, when the steel gets to a thousand degrees, that's approximately, but that's when the, um, the strength and stiffness are reduced by about half. Uh, so that's where we want to make sure, especially with the tall aspect ratio, that you can get uh, a lot of deformation, a lot of deflection where secondary moments could become an issue. Um, so the, the two main objectives though were maximizing fire protective protection performance and, and durability. Because for 25 years, you know, hopefully there's never a fire there, but it, if in the event of a fire, it's got to be able to, to perform. And uh, just showing a high pressure hose stream. So it, it, the concrete itself has to be durable, but it has to make, maintain the bond so that when it get hit, gets hit with a high pressure hose stream, it doesn't uh, um, spall off and, and, and leave the steel exposed. Okay, so some of the key engineering decisions. Uh, we wanted to take a real close look at the type of fireproofing material. The existing fireproofing was normal weight, uh, 145 pounds per cubic foot fire uh, concrete, uh, but wanted to make sure that that was still the, the, the best material to be using because there's been a lot of developments in materials for fireproofing. Um, like I said, we want to make sure it was adequately anchored back to the seal. And then we took a look at some of the installation techniques um, and came up, there, there were some surprises that, that happened along the way once we got into to a demolition, which we'll, we'll talk about here. I uh, should mention that the unit was to remain in operation. So that presented some challenges uh, because we had operating equipment in the vicinity of the, um, the concrete repair work. All right, so looking at the uh, different types of material, uh, we first one we took a look at was epoxy and emescent. It's an excellent bond uh, material that gets very tightly adhered to the structural steel. Uh, uh, so that's a, a big advantage. In the event of a fire, it chars and it forms an insulating layer. Uh, some of the disadvantages, uh, the main one I'll mention is, const is constructability and the need for specialty contractors to apply uh, the intumescent. Um, so it works very well in a controlled fabrication shop, uh, but we had a, an, in, uh, an actual um, in-service structure that we needed to fireproof, which is ultimately why we um, decided to, uh, against the epoxy intumescent. And it also most of these materials require top coating to protect against uh, UV damage. Uh, we also looked at lightweight cementitious concrete. Uh, so less, less weight, it also has better uh, thermal resistance than concrete. So in addition to being less dense, you can also have thinner uh, thickness to the fireproofing. So it's, it's less weight there as well. Um, one of the big reasons we did not select this was because of the durability and the um, uh, impact uh, abrasion resistance was not as good as normal weight fireproofing. So ultimately we selected uh, a like and kind replacement with the normal weight fireproofing. We knew our structure was already designed to um, support that the dead load of the concrete. Um, we really wanted to maximize durability and there's more initial uh, costs, but uh, we wanted to, uh, once it's in place, there's lower ongoing maintenance needed and it's proven performance. There's been many fires throughout the industry where it has performed well and protected the structures. Some of the disadvantages, um, there's uh, biggest one is explosive spalling that can occur during a fire. Uh, so there is moisture trapped in the concrete. And when it, uh, when there's that very rapid temperature rise, it will flash to steam and want to escape to the atmosphere. So if, if there's a dense concrete that's not very permeable, it can actually uh, cause explosive spalling during a fire. And it's a, it's a safety hazard. It can also have um, uh, spalling debris that impacts fire potential equipment and grade and contribute more uh, fuel to the fire. So once we had selected concrete as the, uh, the normal way concrete as the material, we wanted to maximize durability. So uh, the biggest one here I'm gonna mention is the inclusion of uh, synthetic uh, polypropylene fibers to the mix. Uh, this, it, this really helps from a durability standpoint because uh, it protects against cracking, uh, temperature shrinkage cracking, 
impact resistance. Uh, so we're, we're helping on the, the durability side. Uh, it's also very good for the, uh, the fire performance side because these polypropylene fibers will actually melt prior to the, uh, the moisture flashing the steam in the event of a fire. So when they melt, they'll provide relief channels for that, the steam to escape and the um, explosive spalling element is, uh, is minimized. So I've got a, a brief animation here showing how this fireproofing was um, applied in the field. Uh, first, we removed all of the existing fireproofing. The plan was to remove 100% of it of the fireproofing. Uh, however, it was very difficult to remove the fireproofing in between the flanges of the columns. And once we determined that that concrete was sound, uh, we said, okay, we're gonna forego removing that and we're going to uh, insert L-bar anchors in order to uh, tie the, the new concrete to the existing. Um, so then we, uh, we cleaned and prepped the surfaces of the steel. We welded on some uh, square nuts and we tied our uh, welded wire reinforcement to the nuts and to the L-bar anchors. Uh, we coated everything uh, to protect against uh, corrosion. And then we put in the, the mesh uh, and then we form and pour the concrete back in, uh, so I mentioned it was, a, it was an operating unit. We wanted to do this in eight to 10 foot lifts to limit the um, formwork pressure. Um, and then once that was complete, we poured the concrete back and the, uh, all of the joints were sealed uh, with a high performance sealant to prevent moisture from getting back in behind the concrete and causing corrosion under fireproofing. So uh, then we had the opportunity to go back, like I said, halfway through the, uh, uh, the repair design life. And really there was, um, we did a full visual inspection, uh, acoustic hammer sounding, and we did not see any, uh, any spalling or delamination. The only thing of note, we had, there was some minor, uh, minor cracking around some of the areas where they had uh, put some anchors in for some small brackets. So overall the repair was performing adequately and I'm confident that uh, fortunately it's never been tested in the event of a fire, but I'm, I'm confident that if, if, it, if it did, it would perform and, and provide that three hour fire rating. This is a view of the one of the columns looking all the way down from the top. Uh, so uh, thank you. And uh, please let me know if there are any questions. Thank you, Nicolas. Uh, I have a question for you. First of all, I have a comment. These polypropylene fibers also work um, very well for explosions. So you're doubly protected there, uh, in addition to impact, as you said. But what was the percent fiber by volume of the polypropylene fibers in the mix? It was, um, it was fairly low. We wanted to make sure that they could um, uh, Go into the formwork, and there's congestion with the with the formwork and everything. I, think, I believe it was one point five percent. Okay, all right, thank you. Uh, we have time for a couple more questions. Anybody has a question uh, for Nicolas? Okay, I don't see any more questions, Nicolas. Did you want to say something? Oh, there was one about uh, sprayed on fire retardants. So. We, yeah. we did look at spraying on the, the intumescent and the, the lightweight fireproofing. Uh, ultimately, the owner uh, had, had a lot of concerns with that for containment because it was an operating unit. Um, and so we, we decided to go with the form and pour method um, rather than trying to spray anything in, in the unit. And then and, there's one more. Uh, what was the technique to remove the old fireproofing concrete? Yes, we used uh, lightweight uh, pneumatic, pneumatic chipping hammers. Uh, Try to limit the, the, the weight to 15 pound hammers in order not to damage the structural steel underneath. Um, so it was kind of a, it was a tedious process. We, we didn't want to do any uh, harm to the steel though. All right, uh, thank you very much. A very interesting presentation, I appreciate it.